This is the video lesson for Unit 6, Homework 7, Box Plots and Measures of Variability. The learning target for this lesson is, when given a set of data, I can construct a box plot, and when given two box plots, I can compare the data sets. As you watch this video, please make sure to follow along and complete your worksheet. Remember that anything you see written on your computer screen should also be copied down upon your worksheet. You know from previous lessons that the range is the maximum minus the minimum of a data set. So the range describes how far the data is spread out. We're also going to talk today about the interquartile range. The interquartile range works a little more specifically than the range. It looks at the middle half of the data and how spread out that data is. So to calculate the entire interquartile range, we'll take the third quartile, which I'll describe as Q3, and subtract the first quartile, which is Q1. So this is the first time we're looking at first quartile and third quartile. So just to have a little visual to go along with this, when we lay our data out in order from least to greatest, we can split it into chunks. So we already know that the minimum is our lowest data point and the maximum is our highest data point. We also already know that if we split the data in half from least to greatest, the midpoint is called the median. The first and qu third quartiles serve as medians for the halves of the data. So if we look at the lower half of the data, the information between the minimum and the median, the median of that data, we call that the first quartile. If we look at the upper half of the data, the data between the median and the maximum, and we find the median of that data, that's the third quartile. So take a look, we go from the minimum to the first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. So the median is just another way of saying the second quartile. But since we use it more frequently, we also call it the median. A box plot is a diagram to show the spread of a data set. In our box plot, these are the points we're going to include, the minimum, first and third quartiles, median, and maximum. You may also hear a box plot referred to as a box and whisker plot. This is typically the phrase that was used when your parents went to school. So if you're talking to them about it, you may refer to it as a box and whisker plot, but it is the exact same thing as a box plot. Take a look at example one. Mrs. Nichols recently gave a test that was scored out of 50 points. The scores for period five are listed below. List the measures of variability and create a box plot to represent the data. So the measures of variability, those are these numbers that we've been looking at with the words that we just defined above. To calculate these measures, we need to first arrange the data in order from least to greatest and then just determine which number falls into which position. We're not really doing a lot of actual calculating. So take a moment to pause the video and arrange these numbers in order from least to greatest. You can see I've arranged my numbers in order from least to greatest here. And let's fill in our measures of variability. So. 34 is the smallest number, so that's my minimum. And 50 is my biggest number, so that's my maximum, which means my range is 16. We don't need to record the range right now. The median, if you recall, is the number in the middle when I've arranged this in order from least to greatest. So to find the number in the middle, we're going to have to just mark off which numbers we're matching up. So 34 and 50 pair off, 41 and 50 and so on, 42 pairs off with 50, 43 pairs off with another 50. And we're gonna complete, continue this process until we find the number or numbers that are in the middle of our data set. And it looks like we have them here. 
there's a tie. 48 and 49 are both in the middle of the data set. So rather than saying the median is 48 and 49, we're going to find the mean of those numbers or the number that's halfway in between them. So you can do this mathematically by taking 48 plus 49 divided by 2, or you can just think about the number that's halfway between them. Either way, your median should end up being 48.5. Now we're ready to find the first and third quartiles. So again, each of these is the median of respectively the upper half of the data and the lower half of the data. So to find our first quartile, we're going to take a look at just the lower half of the data. And then we're going to find the median of the set. So the same strategy applies. 34 and 48 pair off, 41 and 46 pair off, 42 and 44 pair off, leaving me with 43 as the median of the lower half of the data. And I'll use the same strategy for the upper half of the data, the larger data points. And this one should be fairly easy because we've got 149 and the rest are all 50s. So therefore, if I look, I mean, I can pair them off if I need to. 49 and 50 cancel out, 50 and 50 cancel out. Regardless, I end up with 50 as my third quartile. When I make a dot plot of my data, I use all of my data points. But when I make a box plot of my data, I only need my measures of variability, these numbers that are up here. So I need to create a scale that works with my data. So I'm going to go for a consistent scale. Um, at this point, you can use a ruler or you can just kind of estimate. Estimating is fine for these box plots for now, at least, if you're not given a scale. So I know my minimum is 34. So let's say there's 34. And you can measure this off in centimeters on your ruler if you want 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. That's another key number for us. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. 48 is kind of important because it's our median is going to be between 48 and 49 and then 50. So I just kind of get, did this to give us an idea of the scale. I know it's not a perfect scale. Um, if you are doing this on paper, you could easily use a ruler to measure. And here's how I construct my box plot. My minimum and maximum get marked and the, with vertical line segments. My median also gets marked with a vertical line segment. So that's going to be at 48 and a half. And I am going to draw two more vertical line segments at our first quartile, which was 43, and our third quartile. So in this case, that's the same as my maximum. So I did it in a different color just to show you. We're going to turn this into a box. So I'm going to make a box with my first and third quartiles, and then I'm going to leave my line for the median in the middle or my line segment for the median. So you see my first and third quartiles here. I've turned this into a box. And then I'm going to put dots or points at my maximum and minimum. So one point goes at 50 and one point goes at 34. And then I'm going to connect those with a horizontal line segment. So in this case, there's no connection needed for my maximum and my third quartile because they are the same point, both 50. So this is what my box plot looks like. But the more important part is what does it represent? So what it tells us is that this chunk here that I'm highlighting in red, this represents my interquartile range, right? This These seven scores, half of the students in the class scored within that span of seven numbers between 43 and 50. So this tells us that 75% of the class scored a 43 or above. Um, and also that 50% of the class scored between 43 and 50. And in fact, more than 50% scored in that range because we know that the maximum was 50 as well. Take a moment to complete example two on your own by creating a box plot for the data for period eight on the same test as we looked at before. When you're done, resume the video so that we can talk about what the box plot means.
Take a look at these two box plots that I've drawn for period five and period eight. So the period five one is the same one that we drew together before, and the period eight one is what you should see, what you should have drawn on your own. If you take a look at period eight, um, look at the 50 mark. So this looks a little different. We don't immediately see the median, which on the blue box plot, you'll see the mouse pointing to the median right now, and there's not one drawn in the red box plot. That's because for this set, data set, the median, third quartile, and maximum were all 50, right? So let's take a look at what these two data sets represent. This line that's coming out to the left, or the line segment that's coming out to the left on both these data sets, represents the bottom quarter of the data. So when we're asked in the, fall, in the next question to compare the two data sets and say which class did better on the test, if we look, more people in period five got higher scores than in period eight. So even though more students scored 100% in period eight, as we know by looking at the data, uh, if we look at the left whisker, we can see that a quarter of the students in period five did okay on the test, whereas a quarter of the students got as low as a 17 on the test in period eight. So even though the kids in period eight, more of them got 100%, overall, they might not have done better on the test. Uh, so on the other hand, if we look at the median, the fact that the median for period eight is at 50, which is 100%, that means that at least half of the students scored 100% or 50 out of 50 on this test. So you could argue in this situation that either class did better um, depending on how you supported your argument. So please pause the video right now and answer that question. Time for you to apply these scales on your own. Example three says, Mrs. Nichols wanted to see who was faster at solving a puzzle, boys or girls. She gave the puzzle to her fourth period class and timed all her students. Their scores are listed below. Time is given in seconds. List measures of central tendency for each gender. So as a reminder, that's your mean, median, mode, and range. Then Construct two box plots, one for boys and one for girls, and use this information to determine who solved the puzzle faster. So you're going to be calculating your measures of central tendency up here, and also your measures of variability down here, and then comparing the two data sets with box plots. Using the box plots, you'll need to say who solved the puzzle faster, boys or girls. Please support your reasoning. 